Surely you've been to a tourist <laughs> attraction where it's just like you can barely not often, see the attraction. Not often, actually, not often. I haven't been to any tourist attractions. I feel like that's a bit rich when you can even up a little bit. You've not been, you've been Eiffel Tower? Been Eiffel Tower, yeah. Oh, you yeah. have, yeah, yeah. But not <laughs> chill. But do you not think when people go to like tourist places as a tourist and they're like, oh, there's so many. Have you been to uh, you there, you've been Tabletop there. Mountain? It's like a bit rich. Tabletop Mountain. It is I actually didn't go up Tabletop Mountain. You didn't. You saw it in the distance. Jesus Christ! Aggressive. You're trying to break the door. She is. A, she's fucking uh, are we going? Yeah, we are going. We will keep that bit in about <laughs> me calling you a shill. <laughs> Why did you go to uh, Eiffel Tower? We went to when I was first joined school. We had like a trip to Paris. Oh yeah, how was that? Yeah. For you? Do you go to the Louvre? The Louvre. Uh, we had many fine works of art hanging in the Louvre. <laughs> yeah, no, we did. Um, yeah, we did go there. We went to Disneyland. Any highlights of the trip? <laughs> yeah, Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, <laughs> Disneyland. The classic sort of English yeah. <laughs> circuit in Paris. Um, How old did were I have you? a good time? I was 10. Oh, right, 10. Oh, Jesus. Primary school trip. No, no, I just started. It's just started with gift. Just got up there and they just... Yeah, and they took us all to Paris. That was mm -hmm. the kind of establishment I was running with those days. Well, we went to, uh, with my primary school, we went to the Tate Modern once. Yeah, was that good? no not really that was the first time I realised that art was a crock of shit what do you mean is that you can't is that the first time you'd left uh, that was the first time we're we just rolling we're just going let's just go yeah include this yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean art was a crock of shit well no you know I don't know I suppose I was I was young I was in primary school obviously I'm not sure the age but you know you get that you have that realisation when they turn up and like an art exhibits like a can of beans on its side you know what I'm talking about with like a, a white background where someone's just like sort of splashed a bit of paint over it. Yeah. And you're like, you know, I, I thought art was people sculpt, making sculpt, giant sculptures. Would you still and, hold those beliefs now? No. Uh, well, to some extent, yeah. I think some art is complete sham. And then I think... But do you often the whole point is in the interpretation <laughs> of it? I think that's so. I think obviously no. there's no. I think there's some. That's some of the point, right? There's the the like meaning behind it, and I think that can be very powerful when there can be like a hidden meaning and stuff, which I yeah. think uh, is kind of cool. But I also think there's something to it where you know, the time and effort, and when someone makes a, a giant sculpture, you think like oh, that's actually kind of impressive. Someone's just spent a year making that. And there's all those these little details, you know, when you like walk past buildings in London, like the old banks and stuff, they got little big gargoyles and shit. And you think that's quite cool. But I was talking about this actually about Exeter Cathedral the other day, and I was saying it um, to the to the lads, and none of them understood. Whilst they thought I was talking absolute garbage, but Exeter Cathedral was finished in 1400, right? And apparently it was started in 1150. Yeah. And I searched, or someone searched. Uh, the population of Exeter was like 8,000 yeah. in 1400. Now, 4,000 of those people would have been women that would have been, you know, obviously I'm not saying women can't build cathedrals, but they'd have been at home during that period. Yeah. So the 4,000 of those people, how many of them would have been stonemasons? How have they built that cathedral? Well, you got, you think it's a, maybe a bit of a conspiracy well, here. <laughs> I'm just saying, like how many people, I think the, the population of like what? Like Crediton, with people from, not from Devon, is a small town, village, hamlet situation. Yeah. Nearby, near the city. The population of that's probably like 8,000. Yeah. Well, I do think... But it's so... Have you seen it? The cathedral is beautiful. No, I, 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 I don't know if I've seen it, to be honest. Or maybe, but I can't remember it. I can't recall I have seen a cathedral. I have seen a cathedral. Yeah, they're quite impressive. If yeah, I'm just like, who... The population of the places that built these, these cities would have been so small. Who's building these buildings? Yeah, I, mate, I I agree. I've thought that before as well. Like some of these 
uh, some of the buildings, especially where I used to work in the financial district in London, you wander around there, it's like unbelievable looking buildings. Yeah. And then you look at the buildings people are building today, like this is shit compared to what they used to be able to do. Yeah. Better. But then like, you, you see these buildings all around them as well and all these buildings are more recent. Yeah. They're 300 years or 400 years more recent, but they look like way worse. Yeah. So the buildings that are older look better. Yeah. So we've regressed, have we now? We, uh, Surely every building should be better than a cathedral that's built after it yeah well so yeah i think we have regressed i think we've regressed obviously in our architecture and we've regressed uh in a variety of this is this is one of the problems i think human the human species believes we're on this linear path of evolution and what we're doing now is better than what we're doing in the past i, I think we're wrong in that you think it's more like bitcoin's trajectory i think i think there's a lot of this going on yeah and i think although in certain areas like technology and stuff obviously there's been huge advances i think general ability to survive the uh yeah yeah the average person has you know basically got zero skills but the cathedral building has definitely gotten worse the cathedral building well, i don't know who got- built I, I i humans i think built i'm just saying it just doesn't really <laughs> what <laughs> i'm saying it doesn't really add up because the population in these places has been so small and the majority of those people would have been like farmers yeah. tilling the field. Yeah, yeah. We're tilling the field and, I don't know, you know, just hoping your crop comes in for the winter and paying the barren the taxes. <laughs> You're not building like fine architecture, are you? Where are you fitting that in your day? No just one can do that. Like 5 a.m., 4.30 a.m. Yeah. start, full day on the farm <laughs> and you go over two hours on the cathedral in the evening. If it's not the kind of thing you could half ass building a cathedral, you'd have to really know what you were doing because it's so beautiful. And they're like chipping away and all just... And then also, this is, sorry, this is on a side note, they said it was built, site built in 1150 and it finished in 1400. I think the average lifespan would probably been like 50 years old or whatever. So five generations of people Built that cathedral apparently. Yeah, well, that doesn't seem. Does that seem likely to you? No, nah, it doesn't. It doesn't add up to me. And Jenny said that last week actually, didn't she? she said people actually lived older than we think. That we th- that generally people think they did. Yeah, because if they survived, the survived in for mortality. Yeah, but they're all apparently building these cathedrals the whole time. Yeah, was, sixty-five. That's sixty-five yeah, year old. Forget the- <laughs> making some gargoyles on the roof. I, I um. Should we talk about Christmas? <laughs> I got one more thing to say yeah, on the, on, the old on architecture cathedrals. front. Well, not but when we went to India, uh, when Izzy and I went to India, we went to Janta and Ellora Caves. Can't yeah. remember where in India they are, but they're just the most incredible structure. I, uh, anyone that's listening, search it on your phone. They they made these insane buildings, but they dug them out of the cave. So instead of like getting rock and building something, they actually chipped the whole thing out in a cave. Yeah. It's like actually outrageous. And I can't, I, I can't remember the, the numbers, but they said they did that in like a few hundred years or something. And then they they got uh, architects come along today and basically said it's just literally impossible. It, they couldn't work out how they could do it today with the tools and stuff they have. And it's a similar thing with the pyramids. I've seen the guy, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Um, the guy that built, what's it, the bridge in London. I don't know if I've said this on here before, but... Uh, not London Bridge. What's the other one, which is kind of by... Tower Bridge. It's the one that's on Harry Potter, you know? No. Anyway, the bridge <laughs> in London, which is on Harry Potter, the guy that made that, they were interviewing him on the pyramid, and like what he was saying is, people don't often realise, but pyramid, uh, the Great Pyramid at Giza isn't four-sided, it's actually eight-sided, because there's like these... If you imagine the four sides, then there's like short incline on both sides yeah, yeah. And the reason they did that was if uh there's like an earthquake or something having that type of structure it, you know it would stay it would withstand the earthquake keep it, keep it stable and he said like considering how big that is creating an eight side he said it would just be it would be there would, he said there would be a few architects live today that would be able to do that never mind like back whenever they said it was we well, need to speak to sam harris about this one while all the previous guests because he he won't he won't hear it. He'll be cringing right throwing, now at this conversation. Now, when we could be just, he's very much down the mainstream archaeology. They're all great people in, with incredibly honest intentions kind of route. Yeah. Which I don't necessarily know is the truth. And I ain't saying that, you know, aliens built the pyramids. I you, but I ain't saying aliens didn't build, not build the pyramids, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think it was aliens. That's just, I'm just, I'm just horsing around. Well, it's, it's, no, I, th- I think it was, 
They definitely have some kind of alternative tech. That's basically my opinion. Well, have you seen the? Uh, have you you've read some of Graham Hancock stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, no, for, I haven't read. It's just podcast. I listen to him on Rogan with yeah, uh, yeah, Randall yeah. Carlson. So they they um, I've watched a couple of documentaries on this actually. Is a guy called Dr. Robert Shock, who's a geologist, potentially, I think he's a geologist, or no, he was an Egyptologist, and he, he discovered that the, he saw like the weathering marks on the Sphinx, and then, I'm not sure, I'm, no, I've got it, it's backwards, so Dr. Robert Shock wasn't, was the, uh, was a, people that look at rocks I'm geologist like, geologist he was a geologist and someone else can't remember his name discovered or saw the sphinx and saw that there were these like water marks on it and he took um pictures to a number of geologists and said like what's this and and did this uh, thing where he like covered the head of the sphinx so they were just looking at it and they thought it was just a rock wall and basically everyone was like oh this water erosion uh but then he would show them the head and they were like, oh, you know, we're not touching this because that would change the history of the yeah, yeah, yeah. the Sphinx, basically, because the last time there was heavy rainfall in that area was like basically double. It was like 30,000 years ago. I, I think it was soon. What's the... Well, so, but that's what... But I tried saying this exact thing to him and then yeah. he gave me some other spiel about... We need to have him on again to speak about it because he got quite irate with me the other day about <laughs> yeah. Egypt. Well, I'm the, I'll drop him a message after this. I'd like to know. I'd like to hear a rebuttal to that argument. No, but he says it ain't war erosion. Uh, the, no. the, apparently there's now this whole line of thought as well. There's this other thing that can happen which looks exactly like water erosion but isn't water erosion. Yeah, well, maybe. But I think when you look at the Sphinx, right, its body doesn't match up with his head. Yeah, no. But this is my opinion on the Sphinx. It looks like the body fits something else and the head was put on at another time. And also, they seemed like they were very, they were like obsessed with astrology by the looks of things. Yeah. And it looks to me like the body of a lion. Yeah. That's what, and the, when that was, um, when the lion, when the, whatever, whatever the, that constellation would have lined up with the lion, it would have been like 30 or 1,000, 33,000 years ago, I think, or something like that. Yeah. To me, that seems like, why would you make a statue of a lion line up with a constellation and not have it line up with the Leo constellation? Surely if it was uh, lining up with like <laughs> Taurus, you'd make a bull, right? Yeah. Or what's the other one? The goat? Capricorn. Oh, what? So you're saying because it was lined up with the Leo uh, constellation 33,000 years ago, you reckon it was probably built? Yeah, then, I don't know. It, it would make sense. That it, it would make sense it would be a lion. And that to me looks like a lion's body and the head's come off and they put another, a pharaoh's head on top of it. Well, it's, but that's like, I don't know, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm saying, my point is, that none of us know. Yeah. But what I don't think it was, was loads of people rolling these massive rocks <laughs> yeah. on logs or pulling them with ropes. Yeah. We're cracking the rip, cracking the rips. I'm just like, there's two, it would require very skilled hands to create that. And I don't think, yeah, like loads and loads of slaves are, you know, well, it would be quite good to get an archaeologist on here actually. Yeah, it would be. And an anti-archaeologist. Yeah. And those two, like, those two have it out. I would like to get, followed by be... some sort of fight in the, in the yard. <laughs> For fist fight for for the Patreon sub subscribers, yeah, was, <laughs> just trying to Patreon, scrap yeah. after. It was they can choose their own weapons, um, no guns. Yeah, no guns. They'd have to be old. <laughs> they'd have to be old school Egyptian weapons, of course, just to keep. What them would the you team. have? You'd have a scythe. I don't know what. I don't even know what they'd have back there. Well, it depends. A short sword and shield. <laughs> It depends what what version of history you believe in. You got the guy oh, yeah, who's believing yeah. in the mainstream version with like a rock and a stick, and then you got the other guy with a laser gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying about the head? Direct the head. energy weapon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just like vaporizes him. <laughs> <laughs> turns him into dust. That's for us. Patreon <laughs> supporters. Um, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, with the head. The head's smaller, right? So it looks it doesn't to like me, it fits, doesn't look like yeah. it fits right. Well, it looks to me like there was an original head, which would make sense if it was like a lion's head, a cat head, or whatever. And then someone's come along and then chiseled it away. And I think that's their argument is that it was an older civilization with, uh, you know, high level of technology that got wiped out, yeah, that yeah. did all this shit. And then later on, the Egyptians came along and and kind of. Uh, inhabited that area and, and changed stuff. Have you noticed on all the sphinxes and all those pharaoh statues, all their noses have been knocked off? You yeah. noticed that? Yeah. 
I don't know why that. I think I heard it was a. I think it was a Carla said. Do you know what Carla the rapper? Yeah, yeah. I think he said it was because they had like white settlers went over there, and because it was like a uh, maybe like more of an African feature, they they hacked it off or something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's the only. I don't know whether that's true. I'm, I might be completely butchering that, misquoting it, but that, if I can recall, that's what he said. Which, which, I don't know. Yeah, yeah like which, which seems pretty. But it, it, it's only something I noticed when he said it. It's like if you notice, all noses are off. Well, that is on the Sphinx, isn't it? The nose. Yeah, the is, noses off. All the noses are off. You ever yeah. look at any statues of the pharaohs? They never have noses. Is interesting. But then I said, and I said, oh no, and I heard one other thing. I said, oh well, that's just the weather. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> why just the nose? Yeah. You know, yeah. why not the rest of the, why not the eyeballs or well, the but, lips? Yeah, there's there's some dodge. There's, this is the thing with the, the Egyptology stuff. I, I know we're, we're kind of like bro science in it this here, but proper bro I feel science, like yeah. it's bro science versus bro science. <laughs> All the original stuff seems like they've just like pulled it out thin air Yeah, well. it does. I know, yeah, but this, <laughs> it's just two men with no, <laughs> with no, no formal qualifications. <laughs> and neither of us have actually ever been to Egypt. Yeah. Never been to the Middle East, in fact. No. Have you been to the Middle East? No. No. I'd, I'd love to go. Yeah, you know, I'd love to go to Egypt and like, look at, but apparently like you can't even go inside the, the Great Pyramid. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think they do tours and stuff, but have you seen the Carl Pilkington episode, Idiot Abroad, where he goes to Egypt? No, what's he do? <laughs> it's just like, he stood outside the pyramid and there's just litter everywhere and it's like whirling winds and it's just like blowing crisp packets and stuff around his head. He's like, you don't see any of this shit on the brochure. It's like filthy there. Really? Yeah, apparently, yeah. Um, how sad is that? Like, I don't want to sort of. I feel like I'm the the what's that film with the Native American and the tear down the cheek? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're. About. I feel about that. Like, but it's just how sad is that? This thing here is like one of the, one of the eight wonders of the world or whatever, and it's just full of like, I don't know, people just throwing flipping crisp packets on the floor and stuff. It's yeah, just an absolute disgrace. Yeah, and that's why that's why I think we should be able to vote where we where our taxes go. You know? Yeah, but obviously, but I think we have a hard time saying send it to Egypt. <laughs> to yeah. clear that but I feel like the Egyptians <laughs> would, would vote for that that's what I oh, feel that's what my heart keep says it. no but um, maybe yeah Christmas yeah <laughs> we do, yeah we digress you're a big Christmas guy uh, I like Christmas man I like Christmas I don't know do you find this as you, have you as you've got older like stuff like this becomes I don't know when you're a little kid obviously Christmas is proper exciting and then as you get older it just becomes like a bit like another day no I, I, I'm kind of more down that track uh, but I actually have noticed people who really love Christmas. My old housemate, James Freeman. Like, yeah, he used to get a bit giddy actually around Christmas time. Really? Why? I don't know. Like, I don't really, I think the thing is though, you, maybe you, when you worked in London a bit more, the, you get like a real good chunk of time off. Yeah. See everyone go out, Christmas markets and that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not really actually a big fan of Christmas. I like actually a Christmas market, but like the Winter Wonderland stuff. Like, it's oh, hell. Hell on Absolute earth. hell. Like, yeah, like Jesus Christ, spit, like never. But um, it's so I've never packed. really managed to had like a proper time off. This is the first so I've got a week off, which is kind of a little bit marred because by this uh, operation. Yeah, I've got a week off uh, over Christmas, no games. So I think um, what I'm dates? Not so the games on the 18th, but what obviously I'm playing, yeah. and then off till the 28th or something like that. Oh, so nice. It's good. Yeah, no, it's gonna be really so everyone gets to go home and <coughs> see their families and stuff like that, and um, see a few people back in London and that kind of thing. So I think it'll be. It'll be good. It never really, it doesn't really, it doesn't really get my motor running as much. I call it New Year because it's the start of like a new, you know what I mean? Like a new, which is why, it, yeah, when I was getting to <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I think I always find that New Year's like a massive like, anti climax. Yeah, it is, yeah. I've, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. The actual night of it is, I'm not, I mean, like the actual, it's the start of a new, it's the end because it gets, it does, I sometimes feel this time of year it gets quite heavy. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Whereas summer's very light and very light. You know, you sort of bobbing along, everything's nice. So you can get it look quite heavy. It was real cold and rainy and stuff, and you ain't getting that that vitamin D on the eyes, on the face, on the teeth. Yeah, and everyone fucks themselves by just eating hellish food <laughs> over the whole Christmas period. Those big boxes of uh, what are they uh, celebrations and um, heroes is the other one. Heroes. Well, they mix. Oh yeah, Quality Street. Quality Street. That's well. You one. don't. You won't partake in any of that. Well, no, I will. I will. Of course. Yeah, it's good. You agree? You you you're, do you get greedy over Christmas? So. I normally give myself like I'll try and I'll try and abstain from all the like all that sort of stuff the shitty chocolates I'm just like you know you just pile those things into your mouth all day and they're not actually that good but usually 
like my mum or one of my aunties or something will buy me like a nice box of chocolates and I'll normally just see that off while well, I'm watching. Not, like and they're not for sharing. Christmas they're your chocolates. Well, no, actually, because Izzy now, I obviously I'll share them with Izzy and she's got a habit of eating half, half, which I just don't understand. Well, half a chocolate? Half a chocolate just to try it and put it back in. I like well, uh, for, for me that'd be for me that's an immediate ban. That's an immediate life ban from having your chocolates. Yeah. Do you yeah. not think? Yeah, well, you look at the what's it, it's called the it's called the legend, the, the bit of paper which shows the flavors. Yeah. You look at it and decide what you want and then eat it. Yeah. If you don't like it and too bad, you made your decision. Yeah, mate, trust and me. live with it. Tr- trust me. I've I've tried to explain this on multiple occasions but just it doesn't compute. Well, you think you you think you, that she will never she'll always do that she'll always do it yeah, yeah. I uh I almost did a very gluttonous thing on Christmas day go on I uh the day had finished and you know you have the cold cuts at the end of the day of course the gabagool as I call it in, with uh, uh bubble and squeak or without bubble one? and squeak yeah bubble squeak. <clears throat> so my ma had put on a uh a blinding feed bubble yeah. and squeak cold cuts and uh and I, there were these little shortbread uh scotty dogs and uh, they were like so. Uh, shortbreads are real. Uh, this is actually my Achilles heel. Shortbread, shortbread and pate. Really? And uh, <laughs> not not together. Not together. No. But uh, that would be they, well, there was gluttonous. also pate. I think was also <laughs> was also spread. And I was eating the shortbread and drinking and knocking it back with double cream out of the jug. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's what do you reckon? Kind of, yeah, yeah, it's my kind of style. Do you think it's disgraceful? Said. It is obviously, and your mum hates you know, yeah, she gluttonous yeah, behaviour. Yeah, she's really anti. I was, she, no one was in the room. You do it, oh, you're doing, doing it in secret. <laughs> kind of thing, you're too ashamed. <laughs> Couldn't have done it around. Yeah, but I'm anyway. out myself now. I'm just letting everyone know what I, this Christmas 2016 or whatever did, it was, 2015. Did your did your mum know about this? Or she no, she she probably, if she listens to this, she'll, she'll know about it. She'll about find it. out she'll about be, it. She'll be, she would have... <laughs> and there'll be, there'll be no she shortbread quite in your... She'd tears of shame uh, if she just seen me. No, no. In your stock no, mum always buys shortbread for Christmas. What, always. What is that about shortbread and, and Christmas? It's like, they go hand in hand, right? Do you not like shortbread? I, I, it's all right, but I'm not like a huge fan of it. So take it or leave it. What, what about pate? Again, I can take it or leave it. Not massive. I've fan seen of you it. eat. I've seen you. I've seen you eating chicken <laughs> liver parfait loads of time. Well, just that. What you're talking about that one time at the agricultural inn? <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it was the best thing. It was the best starter on the menu. I just had to go for it. You know. Also, a little shout out, Circa. If you're in, if you're an exit at having food, go to Circuit because the food is tremendous. Yeah, we're gonna absolutely tremendous. We booked it. We're gonna go for our Christmas meal. We had a Cote de Boeuf, which means side of beef in French. Yeah. Uh, celeriac cheese. We had some some oysters. You don't like the oysters, do you? I do like the oysters. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be deep fried. I can't. Uh, oysters kill Patrick, but I sent them back and had the raw ones. Deep fried. Deep fried Oops. oysters in breadcrumbs. Mate, I tell you what is good. So we went. Uh, I went spear fishing on Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah, and it was a very humbling experience. I was it was not very good, um, but I had like problems equalising. I was getting like a lot of pressure in my head. I just couldn't get the hang of it. But I will go back and I will master the skill. Um, were you were you like kind of like the little sick kid who goes on the on the school <laughs> like trip? You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sickly sickly yeah. man. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, Keep going down again a nosebleed. Yeah, I, did, I literally did get a nosebleed twice, but the um, the flats and Hayden who were there and and much uh, better versed in the the skill of oyster catching oysters, free diving, and uh, they got uh, oh sorry, not oyster scallops. Yeah, they got probably had about I don't know. He had big old sack of scallops, maybe like 150 between the two of them. They had loads, and uh, just eating them on the beach straight out of the shell. So good. Did and, you have them? Yeah, yeah, so good. Yeah, we just like you, so you shove the knife in the side. Yeah, and it's still alive out of the water. So you got to be careful. You don't get your hands around the front of it because it'll just snap onto your onto Ooh. your fingers. Um, and then you you kind of like shuck the knife into the side and then uh, scrape it across the top and it'll that'll kill it. Yeah. And then when it you kill it, it lets the shell like opens and then you like carve it out the middle. And I tell you what, eating them straight out the shell is nicer than having them pan fried. So good. What do they? What do they taste like? They're like quite sweet, like a like a marshmallow of the sea. Really? Yeah. How many did you eat? Uh, I had two on the beach, and then I I brought ten back with me, and uh, we his and I cooked them. And you pan fried them. Pan fried them. So what was it? How, when you 
when you like dive down to the sea, you're like, this is an insurmountable task that I'm not up to. Yeah, I do. It was, we went out, I think it was like nine, eight or nine meters that we were diving to. So we, we, it was quite cool. There was, so it's a wicked for anyone that's thinking about doing it. I highly recommend it. It was obviously frustrating not being able to like actually harvest the uh, scallops from the sea floor, but the whole experience is like, it's just super peaceful. We're out there, just the three of us in the water in this little cove up um, Brixham Way. There was a, we swam out about 200 meters and uh there was a seal out there the whole time so the seal just like kind of like swimming around us yeah, yeah, yeah and uh then you like you basically dive down and as you dive down you you like equalize so you blow you hold your fingers on your nose and like blow out and it releases pressure pressure through your ear yeah but for me it was just like as soon as i'd get like a meter off the bottom the level of pressure in my head would just like build up to a point i was like fucking hell this doesn't feel right yeah yeah um so i just come back up then i just went in a bit shallower and i was able to get down but there was no uh scallops there uh but i've done some reading up on it online since and i think there's some some techniques <laughs> that you can do to to help you you're help yourself a, out you're only a meter off the bottom so you weren't far off the bottom yeah I was, I was pretty close to the bottom yeah is that does that make it all the more frustrating yeah, well, I suppose it's just like any skill, right? How often do you, like, when was the last time you learned a new skill? I don't know, yeah. So I like... I'd like to learn more skills. What, what do you want to learn? I think hunting. Hunting would be a good one. Yeah, yeah Hayden, Hayden does hunting. Yeah, yeah hunting, yeah. yeah. He's saying it's... Because uh, Flats is thinking about doing his, like, getting his rifle license, whatever. It's like a day course. So I'm, I might go and do that with him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Planning all kind of secret things, yeah. outdoor things. <laughs> you not fancy the uh, the the diving? I'm not sure really. No, no, I don't really. But I don't know. But was it? Did they say? Were they alarmed at the fact you couldn't get to the bottom? No, they they uh, flat said like the first um, few times they like it took them it took them a bit of time to get used to. It. I think it's like anything, right? You just got to train. The the thing it reminded me of was. A couple of years ago, I started doing uh, calisthenics training with Sammy, you know, Sammy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, you know, just like, to you know, to learn, to switch my training up a bit in the gym and learning how to do flags and muscle ups and all that shit for the first time. It's like frustrating. She's like, I can, you know, you feel like you should be able do to it, do yeah, it, yeah. but you can't quite do it yet. But, you know, within, literally within like two or three sessions with Sammy, I was like doing that stuff. And, and it, it reminded me of that with the, the spear fishing. You just, you, you know, I was out there. I've done, I've dived a couple of times before, but when you dive with the, with the tank, yeah, as you go down, you stop because you've got like 30 minutes of air or whatever it is. So you go down a couple of meters, yeah, you yeah. stop, you acclimatize, you equalize, you make sure your ears are all good and you go down again. Um, so I was like, oh, I've done that. I'll be all right. But then. It's just a, it's just completely different why skill. Can, why can you wear scuba diving gear to go catch the scallops? Is it not seen as the done thing? You are wearing scuba diving. You are so. It, so the difference is you. It's the same as when you go scuba diving. It's different to a surfing wetsuit. So when you surf, but I mean, why can't you wear the t oxygen tanks? I sp yeah, I suppose you could. Yeah, you could do that if you want. That's to. not that's not the game. Well, it's like it's free diving, isn't it? It's, like, it's just a different thing. You like you you float on the surface and you dive. And that's how people spearfish and stuff. Do you wear flippers? You wear flippers, yeah. You're in a, you're in a two piece wetsuit, which is called like a dry suit. Literally, that's no water in, so you don't get cold at all. And it's got a hood attached, so the only bit of your face, the only bit of skin which is out, is like your face. You've got gloves and and. Well, so you weren't cold at all in the water. You don't get. We were out there for like two and a half hours. You don't get cold at all. In, Jeez, it must have to be quite a snug fit. Yeah, it is. The first one I put on was too small for me, and he popped my head off. Literally felt like my head was going to explode. But do you think you'll go out again to the seven? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I want to go out. I might just go out by myself because I don't think uh, those guys can go for a couple of weeks. So I might just go out by myself and next practice. over Christmas and just yeah get that practice in. Did you bring your spear gun out with you, or is it just purely for scallops? Yeah, it's it's not the time of the year for fish because it's too cold, so they don't they're not there. So what they're doing? They just like sleeping. I don't know. I think they go out to sea. Maybe they go to <coughs> go find warmer waters. <coughs> I find the seawater stuff like getting warm all a bit mad well we'll go on what, what do you find mad about well like it, it's it's like cold in the summer and hot in the winter isn't it what do you mean I don't know it takes a while to cool down 
Was it not? The, what, what, so start when, you, from when, the top. when we went to the river that time, yeah. how cold was the water? Freezing. Yeah, like quite actually quite unpleasant. Yeah, I'd say. painful. Yeah, but when we went to, when you go to the sea, it always kind of stays all right. Oh right, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not. It doesn't get as cold in the sea. One hundred percent. Is it because know. of the salt? I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why it's like. Pff, literally no idea. I suppose with the rivers, it's well, it's moving body of water with the sea as well. I don't. I really don't know why, but it's one hundred percent. Because I took the thermometer with me. Yeah. And I, I measured it, and it was. Uh, there was a weak difference, but it was like. I think there was like five or four degrees difference from really? the sea to the river. It took me so long to warm up after going in the river that time. Yeah, and we had like, like hours. Fire on the side. It was a uh, well, yeah, but the fire it was it was a uh, it was a nice fire, but it wasn't like a roaring bonfire, was it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. There wasn't too much heat, like radiating off it. It did. It did its job, mate. There was little rocks heated up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Put your feet on, and that's you, the worst. Do you, do you, how long do you think you could? Because I think we went for like a couple of minutes. Yeah, but how long do you think you could? How know. long do you think you've been out water before you start getting hypothermia? I don't know. Not. I don't think you could have done. Could have done much longer than that. Like f- ten minutes, maybe you'd be in trouble. That's why I was thinking about like the Titanic. Yeah, because that water's below zero. I think in Titanic. Yeah, because it's all like in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Horrible way to go. That yeah, it? literally. Horrible. You what? You you probably you freeze to death first. That'd be the first. Well, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you would just freeze to the point where you couldn't swim and then you drown. Well, you, I don't know about that. Well, you turn to like a, a piece of ice. No, no, like <laughs> like you just get so cold that you wouldn't be you able to move like... to keep yourself afloat, and then you just sink and you would drown. Yeah, freezing cold. Think water. how dark it would be as well in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, be, it'd be rank. I always and you'd be you always thinking about sharks, right? As well, like. I wouldn't. I honestly think at that point, getting eaten by a shark would probably be a mercy, mate. You reckon? You're telling me, right? You're in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's freezing cold waters, and you're scared of getting eaten by a shark. I don't know. You'd be. It would be on my mind. <laughs> on you're my- on the boat as the boat's lowering into the water. There's battered propellers, and you're like, oh Jesus! Hope there's no sharks down there. <laughs> I think I would. <laughs> no be, way. Man. I think I would be. Fair. Play. I'm not. The, shark, the thing about that seal would scare me probably more than a shark. Really? Why? Because it's shark, just there aren't they're not about like everyone makes out there's like there's like this real like there's, the sharks aren't a mainstream problem. It's something in the human psyche, mate. I think like just getting eaten by a shark. Maybe it's Jaws and films like that. I've never watched Jaws. All right, well maybe that there you go. Watch that and then come back to me next week. Maybe, uh, but then but the, the things with the seal seals actually are about. You see them down the beach. That what would stop a seal just there just biting you in like the calf? I don't think they. I don't think they're. That way inclined seals, eh? But I don't think sharks are really that way inclined. Yeah, well, no, true. Unless, of course, you bleed in the water. Yeah, I think there's different species of shark, right? Some of them are like, like the bull shark, they're Yeah, very high, very high testosterone. Whereas other sharks are, I think they with the whole surfer thing, right? They think it's seals and that's why they go for the, the, the surfboard. It's not like people in the water. Who do? Sharks think the surfboard is a seal. Is a seal and... An attack I'd be it. a lot more scared of an alligator. Yeah, like that. they're they're mean in them. Or well, they're they're quite cool, but like they're very scary. Yeah, the death roll when they, they roll you round. They like literally like clamp onto you, iron jaws, roll you round. <laughs> See, really disorientating. And I'm pretty sure they slap like, you about with their tail a little bit. Yeah, and then they they bury you on the bottom of the because they like to eat rotted food. Well, they bury you at the bottom of the river. Yeah, they they're like they like drop you off somewhere and let you... Don't they leave you there just to like ferment a little bit yeah. so you're... Yeah, more, more digestible. Anti- yeah, but- <laughs> all the anti-nutrients are gone. <laughs> Once you become like a nice bit of sauerkraut or a nice pint of cold kefir. Yeah. No, they... um, I think they do. They leave you like under your heart. You're pretty much... You're basically dead, aren't you? And they'll come back and eat the rest of you. Yo, mate, y- well, yeah, obviously you'll be... You'll be... You'll be you drown <laughs> under the water. No, but they don't hold your... <laughs> They're not holding you under the water like the guy from Locks, like Lady McClay and Locks Dog Tongue. I don't get, hey. No, I don't think the death roll isn't until it's just like, I think it's like a couple of times from what I can gather. They don't yeah. just roll you like a tombola over and over again. I don't know, mate. Dre, I, heart, literally rank thinking about it. I actually, I've seen, um, I don't know whether it's an alligator or a crocodile, but when I was in Florida, I saw one attack a bird on the side of the water. It's like a what kind of bird was it like, like a, a crane, you, you know the ones with the, the the long necks. Oh yeah, on the a, on the like bank a, of the water, and it's an alligator coming downstream, 
And I was like watching it, my old man, and he's like, and then it just sunk and just disappeared. And I, I was just a little kid and I just knew it was going to attack it. So I just waited, just got a chair and sat there for like 40 minutes. And then eventually it just like launched itself out of the water and grabbed this thing by the neck and dragged it off and like swam down the river with it. And caught the bird, yeah, ate the bird. Caught it, but it didn't have it didn't fully it kind of like half had it you know so the bird was like flapping like trying to get out but the alligator or crocodile was uh just like holding its position strong and like just swam off with it circle of life brother yeah but they um yeah they they they're, they're then there's loads of alligators it seems like they're definitely not an endangered species no no way. there's tons of them no and i said if you see a video of the alligator walking on the golf course massive they're just massive, mate. Yeah. They're so long and huge and big, like the little powerful legs. They're, and they're, yeah, they're rapido as well. They're, they're literally the closest thing we've got to a dinosaur left. The danger. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I thought turkeys are more like little dinosaurs. Chickens are like little sort of T-Rex style, aren't they? To be fair, especially when you see them abroad. Like over here, we got those groomed, bred turkeys to be you know juicy and fat when you see turkeys in india they're like little scraggy things we're like well they're running they're wild turkeys in india no chickens yeah you see them everywhere in india we were really? we were on a tuk-tuk uh one day where were we no we were in vietnam we were on a tuk-tuk just going along we like went to see some waterfall or something paid this this guy with a tuk-tuk to take us and uh, as we were coming back he ran over a chicken because like people we're like out in the countryside so you've got people who've they've just got their chickens and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they'll just be roaming kind of in the general area of the house and this guy ran over a chicken not intentionally by accident but they stopped the tuk-tuk and he kind of like got off glanced around looked at us and just like picked it up put it in his basket <laughs> And then we carried on. Oh, he was taking it home for later. <laughs> he was taking it home for later. Yeah. So these chickens, they don't, they don't look like English chickens. No, mate, they're way more like scraggy. They look, they look like, uh, and yeah, malnourished. That's what, there's loads of stray dogs as well, aren't there? Lots of stray dogs. Yeah. I always, um, I think Jamie we've had on told us a story about this dog and it had a big hole in the side. It's probably loads of maggots in it. Mm. That always, it literally always scares me. That story. Like, did you ever see any dogs like that? No, the worst thing with um, the dogs, you'd awfully, they, you know, so they're all like uh, stray, wandering the streets, so lots of stray dogs, and they'd uh, have sex and they'd get like locked together. Oh, yeah. So you'd, you'd, that would, I never knew that was a thing, but then you'd often see it when you're in like Thailand. The dogs like facing the other way and trying to like, yeah, they like couldn't... and they're like into, like interlocked somehow. I don't know. Well, then now they, how? I think just, I don't, I, I don't even know. Like, maybe, obviously, someone must have... So, the stray dogs try and attack you? <laughs> no, never. Although, in when we were in Varanasi, there was these dogs that everyone called the devil dogs. Because in uh, Varanasi, it's like the, I don't know, the spiritual, or one of the spiritual centres of uh, India. Yeah. And lots of people take their... Uh, like their relatives when they die there to burn the bodies so you've got the ghats which are like these big kind of like steps like auditorium style steps that lead down to the Ganji river I think yeah and what so people say like you know granddad will die and then they'll make a pilgrimage across India to this place and they put them on you know boards and set them alight and, and push they them they do out. it like the old Game of Thrones where they shoot the flaming arrow <laughs> onto the boat they don't I, not while I not while I was watching, but they just like push them out to the water, and then there's there's like a bank on the other side of the river <laughs> where yeah. some of these bodies wash up, and then they, these dogs just are all stray dogs all over there, and they just have at them. They call well, you them the, you saw the dogs eating the dead human bodies, no, no, so we didn't see this, but we we were told about it. But one thing I did see, which was rank while we were in Varanasi, so we're walking down the river, not where the gats are, like. I don't know, a mile upstream, but like still, you know, they, they're sending the dead bodies off a mile here and then yeah, we've got yeah, a mile yeah. downstream. It's a guy bathing in the river, river and I was like, God, they, you know, that's a bit rank. 
And then next to him was a, a water buffalo, which had died. You know when animals die and they like blow up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like super bloated and just a crow sat on it, pecking his eyeball. <laughs> and this bloke's like a meter down from it, just washing. <laughs> Absolute madness, mate. India, honestly, I've never been anywhere that was so culturally different to here than in India. But did you like those cultural differences? So the first time we went, it was... It's, I think I'd love to go back to India, but traveling India, like backpacking around India is a stressful experience. You're, you're trying to, people are trying to, uh, you, you're just seen as like a rich white person, basically. So lots yeah. of, everyone's trying to rip you off. So everywhere you go, you know, you, you, they're like hiking the price. I'd go into restaurants, they literally like switch the menu out. And I'd, ref, you know, I'd say, oh, you know, if you, unless you give me back the other menu, I'm not going to eat here. And then you'd, leave and then they'd like come running out after and i said no no here's the yeah give you the give you the like the real stuff and what kind of markets are we looking at i i don't know i would never i would never even entertain looking at the other stuff but then also everyone expects a tip i think the situation with some of the staff out there is like the the businesses don't pay their staff they work like uh waitresses and stuff will work like purely on tips yeah yeah, yeah. and waiters will work purely on tips but you know, I didn't. I didn't know that when we first went out. And people were like get quite aggressive about the tipping situation, which ruins the vibe of a meal. What well, so you got? They say, "Where's the tip?" Basically, yeah, yeah. They literally like you know, there'll be a lot of lingering and like even like people saying to you and stuff like that. And, like, There's not really a tipping culture in England, though, is there? Not as well. It's pretty standard over here, isn't it? It's like what, tip, 12%. I, I don't want to sound like the start of the film. Reserv, you know, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, you seen Reservoir Dogs? Yeah, I've seen it a while ago. Can't really remember. I talk about tipping, but like I, I tip someone if they do a really good job. Yeah, but, but it, I don't just think I, I don't. I don't agree with just automatic tipping. But most places, it's the tips included, right? So if that was the case, you would. But you'd never redact that included tip. No, but the. the Unless it's been, awful I, I have I have redacted a, a service charge before, but but for bad service. Yeah, I've been like the service was was very bad. Yeah, yeah that's fine. And I had a bad attitude, um. So I said I don't want to pay the service charge. Yeah, that's fair. But I, but I, but I, you know, at the same time, like the other day, I was I, you know I went above and beyond. Yeah. With the tip, you know, on the tipping situation, because I thought the service was excellent at Circa again. Yeah. But I don't know, sorry, yeah, you were saying about backpacking around the. Yeah, it's just stressful, man. It's it's, it's stressful. I'd look like India's really cool. Like, there's some amazing places there to see to see and stuff. But you, if you want a, a really pleasant holiday to India, you need to do it with cash because backpacking it is uh, yeah stressful. Like the train journeys and all that sort of stuff. Didn't they? they there's no like concept of um, personal space. Other. It's just different. It's way different. Like we've told you the story before, where we were on the sleeper train and. Uh, so like how these work they got compartments so it's like one compartment next to the other and in each compartment you'll have uh, four beds and there'll be like prison beds you know like the ones that f like fold off the Bunks, wall yeah just yeah. your cot your cot yeah and the bottom one will be down all the time and that'll act as like the seats for the two people or the three people and then the top one or two will just be up in the day and then when it comes time to sleep at yeah. night they'll drop those two down and like people will get up uh, but we were in one of those and a guy <laughs> guy was just in in the cot asleep and then some other guy comes in and starts arguing with him, showing him his ticket. So this guy's obviously gone to sleep in someone else's bed yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they made some sort of agreement and the other bloke just got into bed with him. They top and tail. So it was a single bed? It was a single bed, yeah. And they just, the other guy, I think they agreed, must have made some deal over food or something and just got in with him. Which is mad. Like, you never, ever see that happen over here, right? Well, no, but I don't... But how... Surely they couldn't have got a good night's kit. Did you sleep? I can't imagine you sleeping on that. So I... Yeah, not on, not on that one. We were... That was a sleeper train, but we were doing an eight-hour journey on that one, so we didn't sleep. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we did... I think we did a 36-hour one. Really? Uh, yeah, from... Up, from, no, from, like, the northwest corner, which is, like, the... Uh, Jaipur and all that like the deserty areas down to when we went to see the Taj Mahal I think it was a 36 hour sleeper train and it was delayed quite a lot as well I think we might have been on it over 40 hours in the end Just, Was it rammed the train? Yeah, well, you can't, you can't, that one we were in our compartment and we were just in, in our compartment the whole time so you don't really like go wandering around the trains Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, 
and the other thing as well is I think it's the policy out there is you don't uh, pay ticket for tickets for your kids. So we had people in our carriage where they obviously got two seats, but they had four kids with them. So you're in a compartment with six people who've bought two seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And four little kids causing mayhem. Uh, what kind of trolley service food do they have? On awful, that? awful. I was eating... This is what I mean. Like I lost, I lost so much. I was ill as well. I had deli belly for a couple of weeks. It didn't help. But I mean, these sleeper trains, you're, you know, you eat the best meal you can get your hands on before you get on the train. And then there's no, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not finding any good quality food to travel. Was there any there. food like on, on offer? Yeah. You're, you're talking like biscuits, crisps, that sort of thing. Nuts. Like you just. No meat. No, nah, no meat, mate. No meat. But then I suppose that's the same as what you can get on trains here. Yeah, I know. Do they sell alcohol mainstream over there? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can get beers. Like you can go in the shop and get beers and stuff like that. Because it's not. It's the the Islamic countries that don't sell any alcohol. Isn't there? Is is an India divided between Hinduism and Islam? Primarily, is it? Uh, I'm not sure, but Buddhism as well. I don't know. We had our driver who. So when when we went up to the the uh, one area of India the like pretty standard thing to do is you hire a taxi for like the whole time yeah and they take they just like take you around as well because it, uh, it's like really hard to like travel it otherwise and um, yeah our driver would get absolutely steaming every night he loved it what when he was surely not when he was driving no 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 like when we'd we'd normally stay in a hotel and he'd stay in a different hotel but he, he's called Rocky actually he's quite a funny guy um, but he, yeah, he would just get, he loved whiskey. He would just get smashed on whiskey every night. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that, you know, thinking about like looking at India from the outside, obviously I've never been. It's not really top of my, like places of, I'd want to go. Nordic states, I think would be uh, like the place I'd like to go. Yeah, where to? Antarctica. Really? No, that's not a Nordic state, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to go Antarctica? I want to go Antarctica to see what's there, mate. Yeah. Fair. If I could. Yeah, it's gonna get shot down by some sort of like deep state. Is it? Can you not go to Antarctica? No way. I don't know. I actually looked at a YouTube video this the other day. Um, Because parts of it, parts of it are like I think parts of it you can go to. I think so. My dad's best mate called Chris went. He got a a boat like from the southern tip of Argentina around Antarctica or something like that, or to Antarctica. He went past it or something. Yeah. I think you can have a look at it and cute cru- cruises go around it, but I don't think you can like board more and walk and go into the middle of Antarctica. I don't think you can. I think you get stopped. Or- what is like cornered off? It's, uh- I think it's called like common, nice, like something common land or something. Like lo- every, loads of, con- every country in the world or loads of countries in the world don't, it's all like neutral. There's no owner of it. Interesting. I just find it really, really crazy. Now, if, I go, if I go one place, if I could fly over one place and look at everything, that'd be the place I want to go to Antarctica, see what was there. Just like Admiral T. Bird did. Yeah. You know what he said. He was down there. Yeah, well, um, that, all that stuff's quite interesting. I think I'd agree with you on that, actually. I would go to, I'd also want to fly over Antarctica, but purely just because it's like, you know, you can't fly over there, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be a good but place. But no, 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 Nordic States, I think, was, I think Greenland, Greenland would be quite nice to go to. Yeah. Ice Reykjavik, go to those like hot, uh, like yeah, the natural yeah, hot. Yeah. How nice would that be? Yeah, I've been to one of those. I think. Where did we go to one of those? We've been to one of those for sure. I can't remember what country it's in, but yeah, they're cool. They're real cool. Are they actually hot? Yeah, yeah. They're not like they're not they're not like boiling hot. They're like warm, nice and warm. Yeah, that's the thing. I wouldn't mind. My dream would be to get like a log cabin with no internet, and like a, buy a lake with a sauna for like f- four days. Yeah, that'd be sick. I think that'd be so nice, and then have all the food but then I was, oh, do you know what I actually think and this is like obviously you'd want to do like a digital detox yeah. I actually think if you're out there and you had a, an old TV with just DVDs like 10 DVDs yeah. just watch a DVD like in a night I think that'd be quite nice kind of miss DVDs a little bit and videos yeah yeah well, I, had, I had a really good DVD collection back in the day did you? yeah I was. that was like one of my things I like I, yeah I just used to buy loads of DVDs I don't know where they're probably all gone now it, it's pointless having them isn't it? no one's got DVD player anymore the, 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 well that's, my dad still watches DVDs he goes CEX you know Computer Exchange no 
You what? see, you know, see, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where you can go get you get like dodgy phones and stuff. You get yeah. a burner phone, you get an iPod, yeah, yeah, you know, you get a little virtual reality headset they sell down there now. It's down the dark times, <laughs> the beginning, Joshy. Yeah. <laughs> but on top of all of that, you can buy DVDs. DVDs and you can buy them for like 20p, really. But then when you sell them back, so what you do is it's like an exchange system, yeah, so you can. I think a lot of the DVDs he gives back, they basically take them off your hands for a penny. Jeez. And you can just get that towards store credit. It's like that's Blockbuster now. That's what it's, what it's turned into. Well, there's into. one Blockbuster left, isn't it? Have we spoken about this? No. There's one There's one Blockbuster shop left on Earth. Where to? And that's it. It's in America somewhere. Oh, really? And it's like proper... I don't know what, but I don't it's even like know. It's like retro. No, I think it's, it's an actual proper Blockbuster. It's kind of like a landmark, though, like a cool... Do you, do you think they're ever going to come back you know how like vinyl like re- made, made a, a comeback yeah made a comeback do you think DVDs and D- well or video maybe even make a comeback or you think that's dead in the water it's like Blackberry it's I gone. think it's dead in the water yeah I do which is a shame because I used to love Blockbuster they all smelt the same Blockbuster yeah and it was yeah. the this is what have we spoken about this on this I'm not sure if we have but if you have we'll repeat it um, it was the go in there when you were young and it was the anticipation of getting there and waiting and seeing what films were available and yeah. actually doing them and yeah, yeah, only getting them for two nights because I remember we'd walk up uh, on like a Friday after school and there was like a pizza hut on the way to the Blockbuster and we'd walk order the pizza then walk to Blockbuster get all the films and ice cream of course and then pick the pizza up on the way back home and you'd like walk back with it all and it was like a real like it was like you're excited it's fun you know yeah, yeah. all that's just been replaced with <laughs> just like fucking Netflix and like yeah I think which, that- but I, I do also watch Netflix so I'm like I'm I'm I'm, I'm part of the same hypocrisy yeah, but well, I miss that man I miss it, that yeah I agree with you mate there's something about this the the like uh, drive we've got towards making everything more expedient and like easy yeah, yeah, yeah. which is ruining some of those because that was like I agree with you I have the, the same memories of like going my old man were driving up to Blockbuster, it wasn't walking distance, but like going in, picking the movies, you know, getting popcorn and shit, maybe picking up pizza on the way home. Yeah, and it was like, but it was it was sort of, and then, oh, I hope they've got all oh, this new films out. Oh, I really hope they've got it in. I just remember because my dad got, he, he rented get, The Matrix. Yeah. And I'm watching it with him when he had it. And I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Like, no, I just remember thinking like the fight scene was cool. Later, later did I later did I realise that it was the greatest film ever made is it your is it your number one film nah it ain't it's, it's top five it's top five I love, the thing is I can always I can always go back to it I think it's my it's number just like one a nice, film it's just like a nice pair of jeans you can just slip them on mate and it, get into them it's like. so it's so good it's it so is good. so so good what's your have you got what's better than The Matrix I think Pulp Fiction is yeah Pulp Fiction's very good I think Pulp yeah. Fiction's sick well Blade Runner is also very good yeah, but I, God, I, no, no. Godfather's my favorite film. What was about Godfather? Have you seen Godfather? I have not seen Godfather. I need to watch it. I just think it's just. But you got some weird choices. Do you like really like like? Mate, tell you what. Sorry, you like what? like the Star Trek and stuff. No, no, no. no that's easy. That's easy. <laughs> uh, while we're on topic, have you seen Tiger King? The new Tiger King. The story of Doc Antle or the second season. So the the well both actually. Have you seen I both? haven't seen the story. I actually because I watched the second one which yeah. I enjoyed. Yeah. And then I started the story of Doc Antle, and I actually thought like I'm a little bit Tiger Kinged out. I'm like I can't. I'm, I'm sort of I wasn't really into it, and it was just making the whole thing was making me feel. I actually did get like a twang of like I just saw these poor tigers in his cage and I just thought oh Jesus yeah. it's actually horrible oh, it gets darker man his his whole situation is like it gets Doc Anton yeah, he's a yeah I got a bad bad juju from yeah, him yeah. from the get go yeah, bad, bad he, guy he's not <laughs> yeah I can't he's like after watching that documentary he's gonna be the police are gonna be investigating him if they weren't already that's for sure uh, but he they talk about the first Tiger King remember the like I don't know the guy from South America with like the beard and the like black hair and he was like he had his own private tiger enclosure like in his house and they go to him they go to his place at one point he like lets them in he shows them around potentially anyway he is featured in the Doc Antle one a little bit only for like a bit but uh, he apparently that guy is the guy the real Scarface (laughs) 
<laughs> and they've, thought, do you mean Tony Montana? Yeah, he's the real. He's the. He's, he's the one who's based on. Yeah, he's the one Tony Montana is based on, and they're making a documentary on him now. I swear that they've struck gold with the Tiger King. It's like yeah, and he got real- so many offshoots. They've, it's like all the weirdos in the world converged in one place, and then this random documentary got made it features them all. And they've, they've just got offshoots for the rest of their life. I don't. It is the first Tiger King is seminal. It's very, very good. Yeah, it was so good. But the thing is, when I was watching the second one, I was like, "Oh, you see these people? <laughs> what do you look like?" I'm a little bit. So these, this is a thought never go through these people's heads. But it's just a real strange cultural movement. The hillbilly movement is a very strange cultural movement. When they're all there and the guys there walk around with like a sleeveless lumberjack on, a pair of Oakleys with like a, a pink camouflage assault rifle. It makes you feel... And I'm feel- just thinking like, what is... what? And also I do think there's an undercurrent to it, which is an unaddressed... It was, they're all smoking crystal meth yeah. the whole time, I imagine, yeah. off camera. Like, and I think that's what... Because they, 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 the way their mind works isn't... Their, 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 their neural patterning isn't normal. They'll be like, oh, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> this is, so I don't know what to do. And I was a bit confused. So I just started shooting the place up. Like, <laughs> it's not like a normal reaction to but things happening. It makes you think it's like... I feel, you feel like the most normal person in the world <laughs> when you watch that. It's like the shit they're getting away with. Imagine you. I know guns are obviously illegal in America and they're illegal over here. But you, you think like if you started behaving like any of those characters in your neighborhood, it wouldn't be long before the police turned up your door. Yeah, it's like, mate, what are you like? What are you doing? You just doing? What about the first season when R.I.P. when the Travis, his husband, just shoots himself in yeah. the in the fucking head like, yeah. like what is going? What happens in the second one again? The, and the mad thing. What's is the what, second season again? Which one's that? Uh, it came out relatively recently, and it's all about you know him trying to get out of prison, basically. Yeah, and so it's, trying to get the prison. And Carol Baskin's husband actually is alive in and the Venezuela guy, um, or something. Uh, Low Rob Lowe is his name, Bob Lowe. Yeah, yeah. Who has, who has like this? Oh no, not him. Who's the guy that has the? Uh, he has like the change of heart. He goes from being like the tiered, the hit man, and now yeah, now he's and now he's <laughs> he's the hit man with the heart of gold. Yeah. <laughs> He's the guy. He's the one who 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 fed Joe Exotic literally to the to the to the tigers, but now, to the wolves, and now he wants him out. He, and he wants the other dude, Je- Jeff Lowe. That's his name, Jeff Lowe. Jeff Lowe, yeah, yeah, but outrageous the, um, character. And, the, and that's what, because I was thinking, like, I would find that. Imagine you're, you're you're out in you're out in Vegas. You're shooting craps. You you're putting a, a couple of hands of blackjack down. It's like, oh mate, come back to my room. I've got something to show you. Yeah, I want all this. Well, I, you know, obviously, I wonder what this guy's going to show me. <laughs> Owns a suitcase, got a couple of a couple of tigers in there. Like, it's just absolutely crazy. Yeah. He's walking around America with two suitcases full of tigers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's it, incredible. It's uh, it's mad. They didn't they say at the beginning they're like at the first one that there's more. <laughs> Uh, tigers in that sort of like in that area of America than there are in the wilds but times eight or something ridiculous it's literally I think there's like 8,000 in the wild and there's 30 or thousand in South Carolina or something (laughs) it's bonkers man they need to you know they need to some of that some of that taxpayer money needs to go on sorting that shit yeah but then what would you they should just go to better places I think it shouldn't mate it shouldn't conservation situations where we have (laughs) <laughs> I was going to say like we have with those parks with the deers in where they're running around but then imagine having just a park full of tigers so just <laughs> well they just need to release them back into the wild or like you know they couldn't bro like, they get eaten they, they get like they get the, they, they wouldn't be like street wise I imagine a tiger is quite a street wise animal and these dog uh, tigers just be soft or we'll eat, maybe take them back to their you know native country and, and and like make I don't know some sort of massive enclosure I'm talking humongous <laughs> enclosure and let them live out the rest of the day in there so at least they're not pacing up and down in a tiny yeah, little yeah I cage. can't it makes me really I, I can't it, as I say my mum's real she hates all the animal cruelty stuff I like, really hates it and uh, Did, uh, she didn't watch Tiger King I guess you can't, you can't talk about Tiger King near her yeah. or she'll sometimes physically attack you or she'll like push you she'll like don't talk about it in front of me yeah. Um, same with blackfish. Blackfish is the one that really gets me because those those killer whales are just beautiful, mate. And their fins when they're fins with the droopy fin. Yeah, yeah. Have and you seen top blackfish? Yeah, yeah, it's horrendous. And I just think that because I think whales are 
I don't know, like humans' equivalents, but they're waterborne. What you mean? They're intelligent, very intelligent. I think they've got. I think. They, I think if we. I think if we could, could get some kind of situation where we couldn't communicate with the aquatic creatures, we could have a good conversation with the whales. Yeah, you can have a conversation with dolphins them, as well, but not sharks. Yeah. They're cold blooded. Yeah, I feel like they're like they don't have. Yeah, there's not much. I think whales. On. If you had a conversation with a whale, it'd be like, "You're right, brother. What's going on? You know, like, how's the family?" Whereas a shark's just like, "Kill, eat, sleep, uh, fornicate, eat." Yeah. So yeah. The, the reptilian, the reptile's mind has like no chill. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas mammalian it, mind's more sort of, oh, you know, it's all good, man. It's way more. It's like the. It's just that instinctual bra- brain, right? It's like doing the survival things, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. said. Whereas I feel like dolphins and whales would be more intelligent. I feel like they would almost be enlightened beings if you could communicate with them. Yeah. And you can speak to them. You're like, oh, can you like? They say, could you let? Could you let all of like those our other mates out of your know, those swimming bar or those yeah. pools you got them held in? Yeah. But this is why I almost, because I think if you hold snakes in cages, I don't actually think it sounds weird. I don't actually see it as, as cruel as keeping like a dog in a cage. Yeah. Because I don't think snakes really know. They just, if you throw them a mouse and give them some warmth and I'd say another snake to make eggs with, I think they're pretty sound. Yeah. I, see, I, I think see dogs need to like run around and all these mammal, red blood animals need to have other contact with other creatures. Yeah. This is only like this. <laughs> This is the bro science episode. No, I do, I do, see, I do you know see where you're coming from. Because yeah. we had a tortoise. I thought we had a tortoise, didn't we? Did you have to tell you about that? I don't think you've told me about this. Yeah, we had a pet tortoise called Minty. R.I.P. Salsa sadly passed away. And uh, and all he ever used to do was, he was actually quite quite a bad pet. All he ever used to do was hump this Wellington boot <laughs> all day. And if your foot went on the floor, he'd try and bite it. <laughs> That's the only thing. So he'd hump the welly boot. To, like, honestly... <laughs> Like all the live long day, and then if your foot went near him on the floor, he'd turn or he'd leave the welly boot to try and bite you, and then go back to humping the welly boot. He wouldn't eat. He left him grapes. He'd eat. He'd eat. He'd eat. It was literally eat, try and bite you, hump the boot. Those were his three Sleep. things. He'd hibernate. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then, but that's that's actually ultimately, I think, what he hibernated, and you have to put one like real strict. And he was basically a bit too malnourished, and he actually died, which is quite dark. Oh, but um, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't interested in getting. How does that work? You got to feed them. I think they got to have a good big feed. Yeah, before they go into the hibernation. Yeah, you can't. They, they can't go into that fasted. Yeah, you know, yeah. Despite... they can't go into the fast <laughs> yeah, because fasted because they will literally never come out. Yeah, they will never come out of it. But the um, but I'm not. But he was. That that's what I mean. And I, um, when I he was called Minty this tortoise, and when I saw Minty, I think I feel like I got a small insight into the, the reptile's mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've had and you know when you see dogs because dogs like getting fussed don't they yeah, yeah and course. I don't think oh you know it's because they just like the warmth so I don't think it's I think it's because they like the it being having a encounter with another another creature you know yeah it's in their nature man it just yeah. feels like it's way more it's done. because actually my nan in Spain so we're gonna, <laughs> this whole episode has been a tangent but the my nan in Spain actually keeps tortoises which my dad <laughs> my dad calls the enclosure tortoise prison <laughs> No, no, she doesn't. No, no, he doesn't. She's Sorry, like he doesn't the, call it she's like the tortoise it, queen to the Tiger King. Like but kind in Spain. of. Well, no, no. They sort of. Well, my grand got rest his soul, and my my nan moved over to Spain twenty years ago. I think they got offered a few tortoises to live out in the garden, or there were tortoises out there. So they basically made this like run for them, which is quite a good size. Yeah. And these tortoises reproduced, and just now there's just like shit tons of them running around. And all it is is there's one boss tortoise, prison tortoise. <laughs> Walking around, like literally humping <laughs> the lesser tortoises, <laughs> like and, and like relent. So the the one the the, le- the is it bottom bigger tortoise, bigger than the other? There's ones? one big tortoise, yeah. Who and then he'll have his way with the tortoise and go off, and then the, every other tortoise will do it, and they'll just keep biting this one tortoise bottom of the ladder. Just his life must be terrible. I don't think it, they just have no other. They have no off switch. How many are you talking? How many tortoises? Anywhere between twenty and thirty-five, wow, I'd a, say. That's a good collection. Yeah, they. Uh, one of them died. I think she was called. I forget the name, but she was. She was a she. Uh, they they buried her in a quality street or a biscuit tin. Buried it underground. Recycling. Yeah. What? <laughs> we're, we're, what do you mean recycling? Well, just making use of that tin. <laughs> What was uh, once a, a chocolate tin 
created a crypt. For became a, a coffin. Yeah. Became a co- <laughs> became a coffin for a tortoise. You shouldn't laugh. R.I.P. to to that tortoise. Um, <laughs> while we're on the topic, have you seen the cove for the third the 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 third uh, side in the trifecta of dark uh, animal documentaries? Is what the cove? Have you seen it? Is that about the dolphins? Yeah. No, nah, but I've seen uh, Sea Spiracy, which are obviously you don't like Sea Spiracy. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't not. I don't. I don't not like it. I just don't think it shows the full picture. Like they're talking all about massive. They're saying, "Oh, you shouldn't eat fish because of these huge trawlers that dig up the whole ocean." Which I completely agree with. There should be sanctions put on these massive trawlers. You know, I don't know. So they shouldn't be able to operate, or they they have to be a certain size, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. or you can't do these big drag nets and all this mad stuff they do. But if you're fishing yourself or you're getting from a local fishing boat, I don't see the issue. Yeah, I think the microplastics is probably the one that... What? How do the microplastics get into the water again? I think just because it's full of so much plastic. Oh, right, but... In the same way Dr. Oh, so you shouldn't about. so you shouldn't eat fish because of the microplastics. Because the fish is just full of plastic. Yeah, 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 and I do get that. And there's, to- there's toxicity issues with um, mercury and things like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tony Robbins talks about... You know Tony Robbins? He's like the inspirational speaker guy. He talks about that know. where... He was um, he was going on stage and just forgetting what he was saying. And really, he normally you know he's obviously a super intelligent guy. He had uh, incre- like he he self proclaimed really good memory, and then all of a sudden he'd just be on stage and he'd just completely forget what he was talking about. And uh, went to the doctors and he had mercury poisoning because he would eat fish for every lunch for every day. I can't remember tuna or something. Yeah, I don't really. One thing that I used to yam quite a lot would be would be cans of tuna, which I have occasionally now is like a little. It's not actually tuna though, can tuna, do you know that? No. Snapjack. It's no. called Snapjack. What, it's just not, it's a different it's like type a of fish. lesser fish, yeah. Surely they can't do that, it's false advertising. But, <laughs> how often do you eat tin? You strike me as a man who has eaten a tin of tuna in yeah, his time. Yeah, in the past, yeah, but like very rarely these days. You've got that, there's a company called Fish Forever, you've seen them? No. It's like, it's supposed to be all sustainable, small fishing boats and stuff. So, I get, I used to get sard- like sardines and stuff from them. Um, we talked about this before, the calcium in the, the bones, the little fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've been uh, drinking that raw milk now for calcium. Yeah, uh, which is which is great. I lo- it didn't upset your really stomach, did it, the raw? No, I'll no. Give you a bottle of the No raw issues, milk, it? no issues. Um, which, is, which is a big relief, I imagine. Yeah, it was good. I actually want to top up of that raw milk whenever you get, <laughs> whenever you get the opportunity. But... Um, the cove, mate. If you if you want to watch, so dull. yeah, it's 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 with dolphins in uh, I think it's in Japan, and it's yeah, it's it's dark. It might be the the worst of the three actually really? in terms of how dark it is. Is yeah. it where they just they just lop their fins off and throw them back in? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, and they and they're killing them on mass as well. They're killing them to capture them for the fin. Like it's 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 inconsequential to them whether they kill them or not. They want the fin, and they're doing it by. Uh, like spearing them basically and bringing them in if it kills them it kills them if it doesn't they just chuck them back in with a hole in their side it's her, like a horrendous um, but it's a really is really, it a shark fin soup? it's really well made documentary I don't know I think they I think it might be that and it's used in like um, medicines and, and different bits and pieces yeah uh, but yeah it's, it's pretty horrendous documentary but it's like really well made and obviously it's good to shine a light on things like that to no, they're going on so yeah because but the the, the tiger king the, the angle of tiger king definitely isn't animal cruelty yeah, yeah it's 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 the weirdos keeping the animals <laughs> yeah it's not, and it has like i feel it's, it's sort of it's actually a little bit of lip service at the end it's all you know and it has the message oh there's more tigers in captivity in the wild but that wasn't the focus of your documentary the focus of your documentary is these lunatics yeah keeping the animals yeah well, i don't know she gives me they all they, all of them give me kind of a bad vibe but then it's sort of Joe Exotic, you can't help but like him, really. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, he's uh, something. This, yeah, it's something. There's he's something he's, got, likeable, he's definitely got. Character. Definitely got charisma. Yeah, which Carol Baskin doesn't have. She, no, she frightens me. That woman. She I frightens was, me. I was certain she'd killed her husband until I watched the second one, and, and apparently he's alive in Venezuela. <laughs> it's just as if that that story could get you, know, you watch that for the first time and I was like this shit couldn't get any more mad and then since that they brought a second one which made it 
that whole thing of her husband being alive just came completely out of left field to me because I was like certain he was yeah, dead yeah. and then now there's an offshoot with Doc Antle which is, goes into his fucking crazy life and now you find out that the other bloke that just like barely featured in it all Tony was the real life Tony Montana <laughs> and the next up there's a documentary coming about him it's but the one there's the one where um, where when the first season where they all, they're all just government informants they're all FBI informants on each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah, he turned out. Turned out he was an FBI informant, and him. Oh, and him. They're all. They're all. They're all working for the FBI. The the Kenny Powers them. style guy who's like on his yeah, jet yeah, ski. Yeah, I sell I sell jet skis and like you know little spider monkeys. <laughs> Well, the two things I saw. No, and he owned the he owned the strip club as well. Didn't oh he? Yeah. yeah, that's what the guy that got the, the tears says. He? he might have been the seediest bloke in the whole. Yeah. Go- <laughs> he may well be the seediest guy in the whole series. Yeah. So yeah, well, you know, I uh, what did you say? Yeah, he gave me three thousand dollars. Kill, kill Carol Baskin. Oh, did, did you did you kill Carol Baskin? <laughs> nah, I went down the titty bar, bought a load of cocaine. That's just. He went down to the titty bar, <laughs> bought loads of drugs, did it, did it was, <laughs> she came back. The maddest thing, man, is like, the, he, he's out, like, in the second one, he's, like, properly repenting yeah, for Yeah, he is, yeah. If there was one, put, he's, like, he was in in series one. He, he was, was the human of, guy, yeah. human of the shark with just the reptilian brain. <laughs> and it's like he's had a spiritual awakening in season two. And he's fully repenting, trying yeah, to get is, Joe yeah. out of prison. He is, yeah. He was reptilian. Kill, titty bar, <laughs> money. Those are sort of... That's mad as well. Because did Joe... Go, did he goes to... Does he go to prison for animal cruelty? Or did he no, go to prison for... No, it's conspiracy to murder, I think. Because obviously... Conspiracy to commit murder. Now, the guy who was... Who basically... They based it on that bloke's testimony to get him to go to prison, right? And now he's coming out and saying, oh, he didn't do it, I lied. Which I should imagine... It's perjury. Yeah, so he's gonna indict himself. I would, he's gonna end up going to prison yeah, okay. himself. But they kind of left open ended, didn't they? Well, the, yeah, but surely that, surely if Joe's in prison for committing murder, so if you're in prison for committing murder, and then the person who testified against you and was like the key witness or one of the key witnesses to say that you did the murder, then comes out and says, "Oh, I lied. He didn't actually do it." Surely you get out of prison. Surely. Yeah. I imagine there's a few more legal loopholes you got to jump through, but yeah, but that, the justice system, man. That'll make for a hell of a season three if he gets oh, well, out. Well, yeah, season three has been teed up beautifully. Oh, do you know if they're actually doing that? I imagine so, mate. Well, that thing's a money making job. Yeah, yeah. There's no way they're going to turn their back on it was, that. It was, it was definitely the the most downloaded thing on Netflix for a while, wasn't it? Definitely. I'm just, uh, I'm just looking at the time here. I think we might have to call it, mate. What are we in at? Um, we've gone, we've gone over the hour mark. Um, one hour twelve. Oh wow! We we were just didn't we get into we literally get didn't talk about what we planned to talk about. Talked about absolute bullshit for an hour and twelve <laughs> minutes. I was good at. Yeah no I, uh, yeah no I thought I was a it was yeah it just kind of started on tangent and, and ended on with tangent. Uh, at Harry Williams nine one Instagram Harry dot Williams nine one every time every time. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Cheers. If you're enjoying what we're doing, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to speak to me, I. If I actually own a nutrition company, you wouldn't be able to tell from that episode, but it's called uh, Ape Nutrition. Website's apenutrition.co.uk, ape underscore nutrition on Instagram. Got a discount code AS10 for podcast listeners. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Nice one.